Hey guys, it's Ty's Minecraft 360 here with another video, and I haven't done a video in a while, but I'm going to do one now, because I feel like it before I go to bed tonight, because it is quite late. And today um, is going to be another um, gas mask video. Um, I should be looking at the camera, and that's my screen. Um, <laughs> it'll be another gas mask review. I just got this in the mail this morning. I've gotten, oh, I had all day to mess with it, try it out, and kind of form my opinion on it, because I took it to my friend's house, and I had quite a lot of fun messing with it. It is a Soviet gas mask. I did, uh, my first gas mask review was on the Soviet GP5, which I also, which I have just on the side right here. Same, same thing. Filter, bag, everything. Um, but this one, because, okay, the GP5 was a, is a civilian gas mask. This one's a military issue. From about the same time period as the GP5. And it is the PMG. It's the Soviet PMG gas mask. Now there are like more technical terms for this, but it, it's more it's most commonly known as the PMG. Now mine is a size one. I don't know if you can let's go on this side, it's easier to see. Um size in on that, maybe. One, yeah, you can see the one. Now you can't, you're not going to be able to see the dates and stuff on this side, but I'll just read them to you. Uh, it's 1968. So this is made in 1968. You got your back neck strap. I'm not sure exactly if this is a Russian man, uh, manufactured one or a Hungarian manufactured one. I'm thinking it's Hungarian because, I mean, everything I got except for the face piece, looks Russian, except for the face piece. The face piece seems Hungarian to me because, one, it's got this type of grate for the voice diaphragm. It's got the multiple holes instead of, and it's like the multiple tiny holes in it instead of the uh, more bigger holes, less bigger, uh, you know what I mean. Um, they, have, they have different voice diaphragm covers, and the fact that I think the Soviet ones, the uh, neck strap is a uh, kind of similar brownish gr brownish color to the bags that were this one's a gray so i'm thinking this is a hungarian version but they're they're identical there's really no they're they're practically identical there's really no big difference so it might as well be i mean it, i'm pretty sure hung hungary was part of the soviet union when this was made so it, it's still soviet <laughs> So, we'll go over all the things I got in the kit. This is not the complete PMG kit. This is just what I've got. So, I've got the actual mask itself. Now, this is a bit small on me, but I'll, I'll put it on later um, to just show you guys. Um, so, I got the mask itself. Of course, we got the included uh, EO18K filter, which, you can't, of course, it's not going to focus on that. You can kind of see it there. Um, these are... Basically, just bigger GP5 filters. The risk level with using something like this over a GP5 is really not much different. Although, with watching a lot of videos on risky filters, if you if you open it up, kind of give the particle layer in the top a good look. You can see that it looks just like a GP5 filter on the inside. Um, I do have another filter. There's a Hungarian. My Hungarian filter I've got is very similar in design to this. It's the same shape, size, and everything. Um, well, not the same shape, but it's the same size. I'll show you that in a minute. But, like, you kind of give that top particulate layer a good inspect. Kind of give it a few shakes, a few taps on your hand or a sheet of paper or whatever. And if you have stuff coming out of this, then this is definitely, no matter under any circumstances, it's something to just seal up, put on your shelf, and leave it. Or put it in the bag and leave it. Although, if you really, really want to risk, um, like, breathing in anything from something like this, if you really want to risk using one of these filters, I recommend, because I have used some of these. I know in my original video I said don't use them, which is really the smart thing to do, not to use Soviet filters, but I'm dumb, so... <laughs> um. But, I mean, I'm not completely dumb, because I do inspect and I do go over the filters and be like, okay, this, for example, this World War II German filter. 
it is horrible. It's leaking, it's rusted, it's dented in, it's no. Something like this that's been kept in a crate that's been sealed and is not leaking and everything's all nice and intact and everything. This is, I'd be much more comfortable with using than a World War II filter. I mean, that's just, that's just common sense. The older the filter, the worse. <clears throat> this is all a matching set. So we got filter. And then we got a carrying bag, which is actually quite a nice carrying bag. Because when you fold, when you get the filter and the mask in the bag and you fold it up and you clip and you put it together, it's actually quite compact. It's about, about the size of the GP5 filter bag, but sideways. And it like opens up that way. It's actually quite a nice bag. I prefer the PMG bag over the GP5 bag, mainly because of how uh, how much more compact it is, and also the fact that this has like these rip off American rip off of the American lift the dot buttons, where this has just got tra traditional like shirt buttons on it. Where this is a lot easier to just pop open and take your mask out. Where that you have to fiddle with getting the buttons undone. So I quite like the bag, you, like, just kind of like the GP5, you got a, well, you don't have it on both sides, but you do have a uh, little pouch here on the side, and then you got front, back, you got a little D-ring here for, uh, like, a waist strap, and you got the actual, um, oh wait, we do have a pouch on the other side, never mind, I'm dumb. <laughs> um, wait, is there something else in here? That I didn't see? Uh, I'll look at that in a minute. Um, and then you have your actual shoulder strap, which is good. I think this is a Russian one. I'm not sure on that, though. Now, let me... I'm gonna look at this pouch. I didn't actually open this up. What is... What the heck is in here? If anything. Oh, it's the, uh, waist strap. It's been tucked inside there. Okay. It was the waist strap that I was talking about. It's been tucked in the pocket. That's exactly what I did with my GP5... Uh, bag, I the waist strap. I just tucked it into the one of the side pockets. So, that's that's what that's all this is in here. It's just, it's just the waist strap. So yeah, uh, which I haven't actually ever tested or used the waist straps before, but uh, so being yeah, this this pocket here, you would he would have your like uh, spare voice diaphragm membranes and stuff like that. That's so one piece, one of the main pieces I'm missing is I do not have spare voice diaphragm membranes. So that may be a problem in the future, but as long as I leave that cover on and I don't, you know, be kind of careless about the voice diaphragm and I, you know, basically if I try my best not to damage it, I should be all right. But yeah, it's quite a nice bag, especially compared to the GP5. The GP5 bags are not bad, don't get me wrong, but they're like, they're, they're, they're slower to get open than a than the one I just showed you. And, uh, I don't know, just, the straps aren't as comfortable either. That one's got a nice thin, like, profile, and the buckles are a lot small, smaller. Where on the GP5 bag, you have these huge buckles on it with these almost sharp edges that, with, with the position that I have it sh uh, set in now, it, like, digs into your, like, the bottom of your neck here. I hate it. So I don't usually use this bag very much unless just the only time i use this bit the only thing i use this bag for is just when i take the mask places i don't even like carry it around on my side i just it's just there <laughs> i just use it to put it have something to put the mask in whenever i'm taking it somewhere which is usually just like my friend's house or outside or something i don't i don't even use the bag to take it outside <laughs> i don't use this bag much but I much rather use this PMG bag because it's a lot nicer. So I think um, I might as well get into actually putting on the mask and sh demonstrating some things. <coughs> so um, to put on the mask, uh, actually let's get the filter open first before I get that open. So actually, yeah, it don't it don't matter what order I go in. So um, <coughs> excuse any coughing throughout this video. It's late. <clears throat> I'm kind of tired, but and I was running around all outside stuff. So okay, um, so I'm gonna take my glasses off. Of course, if you don't have glasses, this is completely irrelevant to you. But 
Um, to me, uh, I, I wear glasses, so I need to take those off. Which I'm actually considering on maybe trying out contacts for specifically, like, purposes like wearing masks and helmets and stuff like that so they don't interfere. Or if I ever get into reenacting, but that's besides the point of this video, so... It's just like a GP5, you put your chin in first and you pull it over your head. But this one's really small, so it's kind of more difficult, but I can still get it on my head. I kind of regret getting a size 1. I wish I had gotten a size 2, but like I said, I can still get this on my head, so it's fine. It's just very tight. Okay, there we go. Got the uh, mask on now. You should be able to hear me uh, quite clearly through the... Uh, voice diaphragm which is right here on the front and uh from what i've what from what the, my friends have told me that i've shown this to that the voice diaphragm is quite clear and you can take this uh cover off here you can actually see the voice diaphragm right here it's just a little plastic disc here that vibrates put that cover back on the cover just protects it so <clears throat> also, for some reason, uh, the exhale valve, if I breathe out too hard, it makes this, like, <clears throat> sound. I, I don't know why it does that. It's, it's weird. But it's not really an issue, so, uh, let's see here. Um, you can see, like, my hair pokes out the top here, and, uh, it is quite tight on me. My little ear cups don't even line up with my actual ears because it's too frickin' small. But it's still, I can, I'm, I'm going to stretch this thing out so it actually fits me better, which I'm already in the process of doing. Also, this uh, neck strap, if this is kind of flow, I actually have, you can actually, I don't really do it up tightly because uh, it really serves no purpose. But I like to do it up on the back just so it isn't hanging down. So I might, we might as well get into the uh, filters now. So, we'll go and get the uh, filter it came with open. Oop, I dropped the cap. There we go. Just set it there. It's just like a GP5. You just take the bottom off and top off. And the bottom, if this is an unissued filter, like you probably should be getting if you ever consider even using one of these, is you always get new unused filters if you're ever considering considering using a soviet filter never buy used open soviet filters to use because you don't know how long it's been sitting open and those are considerably more risky to use considerably more dangerous if you're ever considering using a soviet filter always get a brand new sealed one that's never been used and do the little like kind of leaking safety test anyways and also You'll find like a lot of like talcum powder and stuff like that on the uh, caps. So that's normal. And then it'll kind of be on the caps here. And uh, I can tell you just by looking on the inside, it's just the same like build construction as a GP5 filter. It's just got uh, more charcoal, more better, uh, an ink, more charcoal in the top section. So they actually are a little bit better than GP5 filters because they'll last longer. So. And it'll just get this screwed on here. It's a little bit harder to screw on filters once I get the mask on. Uh, I think I've got that. There we go. That wasn't too hard. Okay, so here it is with the original filter on. And uh, really, uh, using an included filter like this is really a, a uh, use at your own risk. But I've already used it, so... Uh, well, I'm using it right now, so if you want to use that, like I did, like I said, do your little safety inspection test things first, and then uh, then judge whether you want to take that risk or not. I've already done, already gone through that process, and I think it's okay for, like, you know, momentary use, or like, having it on for, sh like, short periods of time. But I, I still would obviously wouldn't recommend, uh, old filters for actual uh, prepping or like emergency use of any kind because well they are outdated filters so being you know uh, 
from 1968 in this opinion in this instance it's obviously not going to actually like i mean obviously a filter that's still sealed is going to work to some degree at least should most of them do but it still isn't the best idea to use an expired filter in a day like an actual situation where you need a working filter so yeah and uh let's see uh one thing i was gonna i i have my soviet helmet here from about the same era as this was made i think this was made in the 70s so kind of get an idea of what that looks like with an actual soviet 70s era soviet helmet I think this was made in the early 70s, and this was made in the late 60s, so they're not far apart. So this would be like your military gas mask setup, kind of. I don't know if I have the, I don't know if they actually put the chin strap up there like, you know, like some, a lot of people do on their helmets. I don't know how, if they're supposed to go in the front, back, or, I don't, I don't know. That's just how I did it. I'm actually having some fogging on the lenses. I haven't ha hardly had that all day. Also, I, did, I just realized the whole thing's sitting crooked on my face. You can see it's like derpy eyed. Um, that. Let me see if I can fix that a little bit. Is that better? That's a little better, but still a little derpy looking. It'll be fine. It's probably just, like I said, it's the, the mask is small <laughs> it is it's too small for me but it'll be all right it'll be fine but uh this is probably the best gas mask in my collection like functionality wise because it's got side loading so it doesn't interfere with like a gun side, side filter it's got a voice diaphragm a big xl valve here and uh the little the close sitting the like, close the uh, eye lens is to sit close to your eyes, so you can use, like, binoculars or scopes, but I feel like this, uh, the Tissot tubes, the Tissot tube system would interfere with actually getting up to a scope. I don't know. Uh, let's see. So, uh, what else can I do? I can try, oh yeah, the other filter I was going to show you. The, uh, the one that comes with the uh, Hungarian M76, if you've seen my video. Whenever I was talking about that mask in the original video, my opinions have kind of changed on that one. If you see my original video, I think I said it was like, oh, it's alright, it's cool looking and all that. They're cool looking, but they're not the greatest masks still. They don't make a very good seal, and they're not their quality uh, isn't very great. So, yeah, that's just kind of a refresh on that mask, but... The way this is built on the inside is basically just exactly the same as this. Although, this being a much later production, this one being 1968, this one being 1988, I'm not sure about its asbestos contents. But, assuming it probably has at least a little bit, but, of course, doing all the safety tests. This one I'm slowly getting unsure about because the charcoal is starting a bit rattly in there, but I'll let you guys at least see. Because I think some of the Hungarian models, or at least like if, if there's like a civilian version of the Hungarian version, then I think it would have come with one of these filters, so. Yeah. There we go. Put that on. There we go. So it's with the Hungarian filter on there. Really not much different except darker color green. And, uh, see if what else. I'm trying to think of what else I can show you. I mean, there's really not much else I can show you. I mean, you guys are hearing how clear the voice diaphragm is, which it should be quite clear. And, uh, you can see just the mask on my head. It's, it, it's quite cool. I could show you with more, uh, different filter types. Also, one thing I will say that you can do, but I would not recommend doing, is, uh, is forcing on NATO filters. This is a uh, German M65 filter, which I'm, is pretty much a NATO thread. And uh, I have, I did be, 
I was able to force this onto here and get a seal out of it, but it also did kind of mess with, there's like a metal ring that runs around here to kind of keep the shape of the intake, and it like sheared off the rubber around this top edge just because the threads didn't line up. So if you do that, you're going to end up damaging these rubber threads. See, because you might think, oh, they're rubber, so they'll conform to the NATO. And it it kind of does that, but at the same time, it's still not a good idea to force a NATO filter. So either, so for like 100% pure safe use of something like this, still, you should probably get something like an FP, like a Polish FP5 or something similar. That is a modern Gauss thread filter. Not not these all the time. Because these are do have risk with them. Whether the whether how big that risk is, it's it's as long like as long as you have a like a good condition filter like this, your risks are relatively low, but are still there be due to its age. So for a one hundred percent uh safe use, you wanna go with something like a Polish FE5. But, of course, with the problem with FP5s anymore is they're so expensive and rare anymore because everyone's already bought them out, and demi demand for them are so high due to, one, their rarity, you know, one, their rarity, and second, frickin' COVID-19, probably people wanting to buy them for, you know, whatever masks they happen to have, which is probably a GP5, you know, they're buying them out, the more than they already were already, so... It'll cost you like 40, 50 bucks for one Polish FP5 filter, which is crazy. And you don't even see them on eBay that often anymore. So, at that point, I mean, I've already got an FP5 filter. If you've seen my old, older videos, you guys know that I already have an FP5 filter. But, luckily, but I do also have a lot of these Soviet filters. But I do plan on making a video sometime soon of going over my entire uh, filter collection that goes over World War II, Cold War, and modern, or modern-ish filters. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off now. And also my hair is going to be all messy after I take this off because, you know, mask. Ow. I think the darn thing is tight. But, um, so there's a hair... In the ah, oh, we'll get it later. So go ahead and fix my hair a little bit. Put my glasses back on. So yeah, that's that's the whole mask really. It's it's pretty cool. I mean, if you get one that's actually in your size, unlike I did, mine's a bit small. If you get one that's if you get the one that fits you the best, and you find one that isn't overpriced, I got mine for my kit for about. 35 bucks, I think. Wasn't too bad. But you can't... There are more expensive ones out there. So whenever, if you're looking to get one of these, then try to find the best deal you can. Well, try to find the most complete kit that you can that is for the cheapest price that you can. And um, I recommend getting, you know, like new old stock, of course. Because like I said, with the filters, you don't want to use filters that you don't know how long they've been sitting open for. That is a bad idea to use filters that have been opened previously. Like, you want to have a sealed filter. Um, and uh, that is if you even want to use these at all. But, um... Because <coughs> if you get one of these that is dirty and is still open and especially if it's open and it didn't even come with this these caps if it was open and it didn't even come with those caps then using this is basically out of the question just don't so but mine can't okay mine came with the filter on the mask like it was displayed in the pictures but they had the caps, the, the bottom cap was on the other, was on this side of the filter. It was on, the bottom cap was on, 
and it was screwed onto the mask, so the inlet, the intake valve was kind of sealing it off the top, and the top cap was in the side pocket. So what I'm assuming they did when they sold it was that they grabbed it out of whatever box they had it in, put it on the little display that they did for the pictures, put the, took the tap, they just took the top cap off the filter, screwed the filter on, and took the pictures, but then they just stuck the cap in the bag instead of taking the filter back off, screwing the back cap back on, putting the filter in, putting the mask in, and then packaging it all up and shipping it. They just left the filter on the mask and shipped it, shipped it all the way from like Ukraine to here in the United States. So, I mean, I was a little bit bugged about that, but at least I think that that's what they did. They opened it because, I mean, the inside still looks quite fresh, so I don't think it was opened beforehand. I think it was just opened, put, you know, they just put it on the mask, took the pictures, and then just left on the mask. So it might as well have still been sealed because... Like I said, the uh, intake valve kind of acts as sort of a seal, although it's not probably not 100% airtight. But it does kind of work as a seal, I suppose. But obviously not as good as the actual cap. But at least they included this. If they didn't include it, then I'm gonna be. I would. I would have been like, "You're kidding," because I obviously want to be able to reseal this when I'm done with it. Or else I, or else it's gonna become a, a bad filter that I'll never be able to touch again if I can't close it back up and preserve it. So, oh, there's one random fun fact that you probably already know if you're watching this video, is that uh, the design of, of the PMG um, was one of the masks that uh, heavily inspired the Metro. I think they're the Metro Cop masks. From, I think it's Half Life. I've never played the Half Life games. I think it's the Metro Cops from Half Life. I think, but the PMG heavily influenced the ma the design of those masks in the game. It's not exactly they don't look exactly like this, but their design is very similar, and this heavily influenced the design of that. They kind of took this and then, you know, kind of I guess made it different enough that it wasn't gonna be like, oh, that's a Soviet PMG, or they just wanted it to look futuristic, because I'm pretty sure, ha isn't Half-Life supposed to be like a, in the future? Yeah, it's basing off of its aesthetics, definitely the future. Um, so maybe like a futuristic version of this. I don't know, but. <clears throat> so that about does it for my review of this. I think it's good. If you can get one in your size and you get a good kit for a good price, I would, in your gas mask collector of any kind, then I would recommend getting one of these. They're, they're cool. So that about does it for my review of the P Soviet PMG gas mask. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.